Hey guys, it's Leon from Back to Basics Dog Training here. Excited to bring you another video in our upcoming How to Help Your Dogs and You Coexist today. Um, I'm excited about today's video. Uh, today's going to hit on the problem I'm seeing with some of the things going on in the world with the pandemic related to what's going on with us getting dogs. So with that being said, we're going to dive right into it. Guys, if you like what I've been bringing to you, please hit the comment button. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know where you're listening from. Any feedback you have, I'd appreciate it. Remember to hit the subscribe button somewhere down over here. Um, and let's get into it. So I've got a lot of questions on my Facebook Live, which I do every Saturday morning at 11 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, it's fun, it's exciting, I enjoy it. You have no idea how much it means to me that I see all my viewers on there uh, watching and asking questions. Um, it goes to my motto, together we can help one dog and one family at a time. So, big question I've been getting is, since the beginning of the pandemic, a lot of people have been getting puppies or new dogs to their homes. But we're going to specifically gear this one a little bit more towards puppies and some of the issues that I've been seeing and some of the things we can do to help them succeed in life moving forward when life goes back to what will be considered the new normal soon. <clears throat> um, so the first thing I always say, and I said it on one of my other videos, is guys, I know puppies are adorable. They are cute. We want to love them. We want to kiss them. We want to squeeze the cheeks. We want to do everything to them. It's not the right thing to do for the puppy. That makes us feel good. And I'm all about making us feel good, but we have to think of what's right for the puppy. So the first thing I say, get a new puppy, get it home safely, make sure it's in a crate, car carrier, something safe for the dog to travel in. It also helps get used to the crate, which is going to be very vital in the puppy's life. Uh, the second thing I say is when we get them into the house, just don't put them down and let them have free run. Give them a quiet space in the house. Set up a crate in a quiet room in your house. Somewhere where there's not going to be a lot of foot traffic, a lot of people going in to see what the puppy's doing. But definitely set up the crate in a quiet room in the house, a safe room in the house. Always keep in mind, watch your electrical cords, your cable, your anything that the dog can get their mouths on because it will become chew toys. Um, but the crate should be set up in a quiet place. Remember, on average, a puppy under the age of six months old should be sleeping anywhere from 16 to 20 hours a day. And that's the dilemma I'm finding with this pandemic is we're home more often and we're interacting with the puppies and they're tired, they're getting cranky. So guys, please, please remember they need to sleep just like our babies need to sleep. It's real, 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 real important. Um, helps their growth, helps their mental stability and gives us some peace of mind. With that being said, we're going to talk about some crate training. The way I do it, I'm not saying it's necessarily the right way, but I've had huge, huge success in how I do my crate training with my puppies. So how it works for me is one, I make sure I, before I get a puppy, I set up a Excel spreadsheet. When does the dog eat? When do I take the dog out? How long after eat does it have a bowel movement? After drinks, how long after does it have to go and pee? I try to set this all up in advance to me getting a puppy. Why? Because I need to understand the puppy schedule because every puppy is an individual and I need to base my schedule around the puppy schedule because we don't want accidents in the crate. We don't want accidents in the house. We want to get them on a clear, decisive path to help them succeed. So with that being said, we're going to go into it. So we get the new puppy home. And we're going to introduce it to the crate in a calm manner. It's not going to be all about excitement. It's not going to be about necessarily giving it a treat to go in there. We're just going to put it in there like we put our kids in cribs. It should be a calm place. Um, depending on the age of the puppy, the general rule of thumb, if I'm not mistaken, is they can hold their bodily functions for one hour for every month they're born. So if they're two months old, they can hold it two to three hours, you know, and so on and so forth. Not necessarily golden rule. Uh, I just recently worked with a puppy that seems to hold it three hours after it eats, which blows my mind. Um, but from talking to a vet, that's not an uncommon thing. Um, with that being said, I would put the puppy in the crate. I got it home, I bring it in, goes right to nappy nap time. 
Uh, two hours later, depending again on the age of the puppy, I'm going to wake up the puppy, put it on a leash, and bring it to its bathroom spot. I am not going to carry the dog unless I have a lot of stairs. But if it's on flat ground or any stairs, depending on the physical size of the puppy, I may carry them down the stairs. But after that, they're walking. They got four legs, guys. They can walk. I bring them to the bathroom spot. At that point, I will have treats with me in my hand or my pocket in a treat bag, whatever it is. And if they pee or have a bowel movement outside, I praise, 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 best thing since sliced bread. And I give them a treat outside where they went. Um, and that's real important moving forward. Don't make fall into the rut that some people do is dog goes out, goes to the bathroom, we come back in, we give them a treat. Dogs become very, very smart. And they realize that if I go out, I come in, I get a treat. I'll just go out and in, in and out a hundred times a day. I get treats. So treat only outside when they go to the bathroom. Um, and praise. Make sure you use a lot of praise. They love making us happy. Um, the biggest question I get is, well, my dog ate. I'm outside, you know, and it's not going to the bathroom. Patience. Patience, patience, patience. Um, I'm going to get into that in a little bit, so I don't want you to forget that that's something we're going to get into, the way I set up with the eating. But start keeping your schedule right away. So now we wake up in the morning. We're going to take the dog out to go to the bathroom because by that point, hopefully they need to at least pee. Um, we take them out. We bring them in. You can play with them a little bit outside. Don't get crazy with it yet. And then bring them back in. They go back into the crate while you prepare their meal. Then I take the puppy out of the crate after the meal is prepared. I give them their food. I let them eat. Make sure they have their water. And I put them back in the crate for about 15 minutes. Let them settle down. It's not about running around playing with a full belly. I don't like playing with full belly, belly aches. So I don't let my dogs do it either. After that 15 minutes, I get them. I put them on a leash, go to the bathroom spot. And I take them out, a little walk around the bathroom area. Um, but eventually I'm going to stop walking. This is where I think we have the huge disconnect. Remember, everything is new to our puppies. Their sense of smell is going to be heightened. New smells in our yard compared to where they came from. Everything's going to distract them. Wait them out. It's real, real important because they will get distracted and again i relate to having kids how many times do kids get out there playing get distracted run into the house i gotta go pee and by the time they get the word pee out they already had an accident not their fault they just got overly excited they forgot that they had to go puppies do the same thing i had the same thing happen with my grand dog i would let him out with the other dogs and he'd be out there for a half hour 45 minutes playing and doing all this type of stuff coming to the house and then he realized oh i never did my bathroom detail and and pooped in my house. I learned very quickly he gets distracted. So I wait them out. I get to an area after I know they walked and I got the food to mix up a little bit. I wait them out and I'll just stand my ground. 15 minutes I'll stand there. If they don't go within the 15 minutes, I bring them back inside. They go back to the crate. 15 minutes later, I start the process over again because I need to figure out their schedule. Real, real, real important. Um, again, every dog's an individual, their schedule is their schedule. Uh, it's my job as their pack leader, as their doggy daddy to come up with what they're, they're showing me and work with that schedule. So I make sure they have the best chance to succeed. And that's real, real important. So the next step is they pee, they poop outside. Remember high praise, give treats. You can play with them a little bit outside you know, five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Remember that puppies, they don't have a long burst of energy like we think they do. And then they come back in, nappy nap time. Two hours, I use a two hour rule of thumb. I always check everything two hours, two hours later. I go, I let them out again. Hopefully they should have to pee, maybe need some water, whatever. And I go through this whole routine. If they pee and poop outside again, treat, 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 praise, 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 play a little bit back to bed remember they need to sleep as much as you want to snuggle with them and hold them and cuddle with them and make them feel like that's for again guys that's for us it makes us feel good eventually you can get there but set clear decisive rules don't give them puppies free run in your home 
give them that one rule room so like in my house here i use my dining room as an example it's kind of offset not a high traffic area there's two entrances into it i put baby gates there to keep other dogs out um and the crate is in a corner or somewhere where it's relatively quiet and they don't have a good line of sight to a lot of what's going on in the kitchen area uh like i said every two hours i would do this routine they're pretty much in the crate for me the first week almost 24 7 except for eating bathroom a little bit of play outside back to the crate after the first week or two depending on the dog I open up the crate and I give them free reign in my dining room only. Not the whole house, the dining room. But they're only out of that crate when I can be in there supervising them because they will get in trouble. Um, and then again, I look for signs. It looks like they have to go out, get them on a leash. And I do a lot with the leash guys. Remember, you know, the leash is my second favorite training tool. Um, and they go out to the bathroom spot. They go to the bathroom again. I got my treats with me. Praise, praise, praise. Treat, treat, treat. Tanya now, the longest it ever has taken me to housebreak a dog, minus an accident here and there, is two weeks. Where I knew their schedule, they knew my schedule, we were on the same page. Maybe one or two accidents after that, if that might. So it works. I've proven it with my own personal dogs. I wish back then they had the world of video. I could have videotaped a lot more of it for you guys, but unfortunately they didn't have it. Um, but take the time, do it right. Don't get frustrated with the process. Don't get frustrated if you go out there three times in the next hour after they eat until they finally go. You're learning, they're learning. Everything is new to them. This is harder for people that don't have a grass yard, people that live in the city. It's harder for them to do it because dogs don't like going on concrete or blacktop. Uh, so it's even a harder process for them to get used to it. And remember, the more smells, the more this, the more that, the more they're gonna get distracted and the less odds they're going to have their bowel movement or their bladder movements. But it will work. Take the time to do it right. It's for your own sanity. It's for their sanity. It makes you guys have a better relationship because you're now understanding what your dog is looking for and telling you. Um, and then, you know, you can use words. You want to go out, you want to go out, whatever you want. I don't, you know, just to make it so that you can say you want to go out and if they want to go out, they'll give you a clue. However you want to use the obedience part of it, that's up to you guys. I don't really tend to preach on that too much. Um, after about two weeks, I start bringing them into the rest of my house. How do I do that? This is why the leash is so important from day one. I tether them with me. So if I go into my kitchen, they're tethered to me. They're staying with me in the kitchen. The reason I like them being tethered to me is one, again, puppies get in trouble. If I can't physically be watching them 24 seven, I gotta have a way to keep them close enough to me to make sure they don't get in trouble. And it also has helped forming a bond. Uh, if I go into my living room because I wanna watch TV, they're tethered to me. I do not pick them up and put them on my lap on the furniture. I will sit on the floor with them. I will have no problem doing that. They have to earn the privilege in my world to go up on the furniture. Uh, I just don't give them carte blanche but they're earning privileges as we go around to different parts of the house. Um, I know vets will scare you about taking your dogs out without all shots. Um, I understand all that. I understand the vets will try to get you to wee wee pad train the dogs and keep them inside till they get those last shots. I don't necessarily agree with it. One of the things I always tell you to do, go to, you know, Chewies.com, Petco, wherever, pick up, uh, I'm going to say baby wipes because I don't know what they're called for the dogs. Pick up those, you know, sanitary wipes for the dogs. You take them outside, either in your yard, on the street. Don't go to public grassy areas because that could be dangerous. But you can walk on blacktop with them as long as it's not too hot. Uh, your own yard. And when they come in, wipe their paws down. Wipe any parts that may have hit the ground. Uh, just practice safe. You know, we learned out about this uh, pandemic. Wash your hands more. Wash your dog's paws more. A couple things that'll happen. One, it gets them used to their paws being handled, which will make it easier for the nail grooming and other things that they have to go through, um, grooming processes. And it's real, real important to do that. It makes them used to this, so it makes it easier for them later on in life. 
don't hesitate to walk your dogs. I know I live on a very quiet street most of the time. Um, there's not a lot of traffic on my street. So when I had Zoe as a puppy, I'd walk her on the street. I would let her into the woods across the street for me because I don't know what animals have been in there. I don't know whose dog pooped and nobody cleaned it up. Uh, but I would walk her there just to get her used to being on a leash, healing, starting the process of our, my master in the walk back to basics style, uh, which is one of the videos on my YouTube channel. Guys, remember, if you're getting value out of this uh, video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, put your comments down, let me know what you think. Um, everything with a puppy is going to take time. No, nothing is going to be done overnight. You can start your basic obedience commands from day one if you want to with treats, do the sit, the stay. The stay is going to be hard, but the sit, um, whatever you want to do, puppy 101, that's fine. You can start that. Keep in mind, though, they're puppies. They need to rest. Don't push them too hard. I think the biggest mistake I'm seeing with a lot of these puppies right now is one, they're very tired. They're very cranky because they're not sleeping enough. And since they're not sleeping enough, we're trying to get them to sit, stay, roll over, play there, give me your board, do this, do that, stop biting me, do this, blah, blah, blah. And the dogs are just blah, out of their minds. Take your time, guys. Enjoy the process. And that's what it is. It's a labor of love. It's like raising our kids. You know, I didn't expect my kid, you know, when she was, my kids, when they were first born to be, you know, graduate high school day one. I expected them to go go through a journey together with me to help them succeed. And that's what I look at when I raise my puppies. We go to a, on a journey together to help them succeed. So I have the happy balanced dog that I want, the happy balanced dog they want to be and need to be, and we have a great lifetime together. So take your time, do it right. Remember the great added to our family. I love the fact that everybody's getting puppies. Um, but take your time. Don't put undue expectations on how long something should happen. Take your time. Learn from your dog. Learn what your dog is telling you as far as its own bathroom schedule, its own when it wants to go to sleep, when it wants to be left alone. They tell us the same way we tell our kids. Uh, we just may not be listening hard enough to get their point. So again, enjoy the puppies. Remember together, we can help one family, one dog and one family at a time. And remember, 99% of it comes from you. I said, leash is my second favorite training tool. My first training tool, favorite training tool is you. So remember, no anger, no frustration, no nonsense. With that being said, stay healthy, stay safe. God bless. And remember, together, we can help one dog and one family at a time. Have a great day, guys.